So there are significant differences between the two tests and they look to answer different uh, clinical questions. So I'll start with a cardiac CT. A cardiac CT uh, uses X-rays to obtain a, a circular image of the heart. And from there, we're really using, in the majority of cases, cardiac CT to look at the coronary arteries. And this might be to answer questions regarding has a patient got angina, or even what is the uh, individual risk of heart attacks to that patient. A cardiac MRI scan uh, uses a, a technique called magnetic resonance imaging, and that, usually, that is usually used to look at soft tissues as opposed to other body structures. The beauty of cardiac MRI is that it allows us to get very accurate information about how the heart is working. And more so, you're able to look at the integrity of the heart muscle. Cardiac MRI is principally used to look at the heart muscle to see if there's diseases of the heart muscle. And we can use it to see uh, whether patients are getting angina. So we use it as a stress test as well. There's many facets to a cardiac MRI. Uh, but the principal reasons a cardiologist will request it is to look at diseases of the heart muscle, to check on the heart function and also the valvular function. And it can also be used as a test for angina. Um, so cardiologists will determine which test they want to use based on your symptoms. Um, cardiac CT, for example, is used principally to investigate patients uh, that are experiencing pains in the chest. So it's a test for angina. A cardiac CT looks very closely at the coronary arteries and it's able to give a quantitative assessment as to how much narrowing there is there and whether or not there's any evidence of angina even on the test. We can also use cardiac CT to look at the heart structure and function, but this is less commonly used for this purpose. And increasing indications or or increasing use for cardiac CT is to look at the blood vessels uh, in patients that are going for an aortic valve replacement called a TAVI. And we're doing increasing numbers of these scans and that can look at the structure of the aortic valve and also the vasculature and the main blood vessels uh, that are used in the procedure itself. A cardiac MRI uh, is uh, usually used for a different purpose. It might be that the cardiologist wants to look at the structure and function of the heart. And a, a classic example of this might be a patient presenting with breathlessness. And principally, a cardiac MRI is used to diagnose diseases of the heart muscle, so cardiomyopathies. It's also used for a variety of indications, which might be uh, to check the structure and function uh, of the heart muscle, to check the uh, ejection fractions, how well the heart chambers are working and also to check the integrity of the heart muscle itself. Has a patient sustained a heart attack in the past? Has a patient got evidence of valve problems? One of the increasing uses of cardiac MRI is a stress test and we're able to give a, a stressing agent to check how much angina a patient is getting and how much of the heart muscle is affected by the angina. So often in uh, some of my patients, they can expect to be re referred for a cardiac CT and then occasionally for a cardiac MRI uh, to check for evidence of angina. So they can be used sequentially uh, as well as independently. So patients can prepare for a cardiac CT uh, by not taking uh, caffeine four hours before uh, the study. Uh, there, there really isn't any significant restrictions regarding cardiac CT. Um, in terms of cardiac MRI, depending on the test that we're doing, if it's a stress test, we ask a patient not to drink caffeine uh, for 24 hours prior to the test. And in both tests, we ask patients to make sure they're well hydrated afterwards, because often, not always, but often we will use a contrast agent that is uh, excreted from the kidneys. Um, so there's not really any significant preparation needs for the patients, um, and it will be well explained uh, on the patient information leaflet before they come for the test. So cardiac CT is performed uh, using a CT scanner. The patients uh, go through a preparation phase whereby they're asked to usually undress uh, from the waist up and the 
patient gown will be provided. In terms of cardiac CT, and this is where it differs from conventional CT, they will have ECG electrodes placed on them because we like to, or we time the scan to do with the heart rate and we scan at very specific points of the heart rate. And that's because the heart is a moving structure and we uh, scan when the heart is still. So at diastole, we call that when the heart is at its stillest point. And that allows us to take accurate images without blurring of the heart muscle. So you'll be have some ECG electrodes applied uh, to your skin, uh, and then you will uh, go on the scanner. So you'll be lying relatively flat and go through the polo mint tube. Um, there is often breathing instructions. We ask patients to hold their breath during the scan. Um, and then depending on the type of scan we're doing, patients will often get a cannula so we could administer the contrast, which allows us to take accurate information regarding the coronary arteries. Uh, the whole scan itself it takes approximately 15 to 20 minutes to perform. After the test is finished, the cannula will be removed and the patient will obviously take the ECG electrodes off uh, and will be asked to hydrate if they've had the uh, contrast agent. And that's because the contrast agent is excreted from the kidneys and it basically flushes through the system. A cardiac MRI is performed in a similar fashion, to be honest. Patients will be asked to undress from the waist up. The difference being that uh, when you have a cardiac MRI, a coil is placed across the chest, which is relatively tight fitting. And that allows focus of the special resonance uh, detectors and allows us to get very nice crisp images of the heart. It's performed in a similar fashion. There will be breath holding as part of the examination. The tubes within the MRI machines tend to be relatively closer fitting compared to a CT. And the length of an MRI varies, but often will take up to an hour to perform. The ECG electrodes are placed on the chest and the waist in a similar fashion to cardiac CT. And again, depending on the type of scan doing, often a cannula will be required in order to give contrast or sometimes stressing agents with the cardiac MRI. So a calcium score is used in the majority of cardiac CTs. Cardiac CT is like an umbrella term um, and will often encompass a calcium score at the first point of call and then followed by a CT coronary angiogram. Historically, we did calcium scores to check on the validity of doing a CT coronary angiogram because the scanners were slightly slower five to 10 years ago. And if your calcium score was high, then we tended not to proceed to the main scan because it would render the, the images difficult to interpret. However, calcium score is a very valid measure of looking at a person's overall disease burden. So we often use calcium scores in isolation when we're looking to accurately risk stratify an individual um, for the risk of cardiovascular disease. And we know now from the literature that calcium score is a very, very useful tool for looking at an individual's um, risk of a heart attack over a five to 10 year period. And it gives significant more in, significantly more information than traditional risk scoring factors like GPs use. So at the minute, the traditional paradigm is that an individual or a patient will go to their GP practice and they will answer a series of questions on their health. You know, have you got diabetes? Do you have high blood pressure? Do you have a family history of heart disease? And all of that information gets plugged into a risk calculator. Uh, the traditional ones are called Q-Risk, uh, JBS3 is another one, Framingham. Um, and these have been around for decades now. Um, and what happens is that the computer churns out a percentage chance. And then often treatment decisions such as statins or aspirin even uh, are given to a patient based on their overall risk from this risk calculator. Now, what a calcium score does is it fine tunes that risk and it informs risk in an individual above and beyond a traditional risk calculator does. And we know from research that in intermediate risk patients, that the risk calculators are wrong 50, up to 50% of the time. So a calcium score is a really useful tool for accurately delineating an individual's risk, uh, particularly an individual that is at intermediate risk of cardiovascular disease. So often I will use 
calcium score in my clinical practice in asymptomatic individuals who are, are at an intermediate cardiovascular disease risk. Uh, so the results uh, are available often on the same day as, uh, as the scan. The CT images uh, are looked at by the consultant cardiologist or radiologist on the day of the scan usually, and a report is um, uh, produced on the same day. With a cardiac CT scan, uh, the data is also looked at by a radiologist. It's a bit of a two-for-one scan because not only do you look at the heart, but you also get the lungs as well within the test. And a cardiologist is not always qualified to look at the extra cardiac findings. So in the majority of cases, a radiologist will also look at the non-cardiac aspects. And that scan is usually put, to put together on the same day. It's a similar case for cardiac MRI. Usually there's only one person, either a cardiologist or radiologist, reporting the study. And the results are available usually on the same day.